So we're going to make a creature that we're going to use for 3D printing. So before we get going, let's just have a look at how I'm set up. So if you hit um, the little white button on, on my case here, the non-dominant hand, we get these options. And you'll know what I mean straight away by dominant and non-dominant. So I'm set up as left-handed. You might well be right-handed, in which case the first thing you need to do is click that button. And that means that all the operations, like all of the brush operations, everything that really happens to the model is on this dominant hand. So for me, remember, it's the left. And also you can see two spheres, and that means I've got symmetry on X on this panel here on my non-dominant hand. So what we're going to do before we start any kind of modeling or anything like that is we're going to have a look at some reference images and we'll bring those reference images into the scene. So to do that, if we click this button here on my non-dominant hand and we look down to add image and then we can just navigate through to where we've got our images. So I'll just zip over this for you. So once we get down to shape labs, we navigate down to references and in here I've got a few references already set up. So if I click on one that I like, like so, and then load it in. And there we've got a nice picture of the creature that we're gonna make. So it's a big rhino beetle. And we'll just, with my inner grip or the grip on my non-dominant hand, I'm just moving it around. It works the same on both hands, as you can see. So just the inner grip, and it moves around and that's going to be the way we also scale things as well so if we grab two inner grips together so inside grips both together pull apart and scale and it allows you to move it and scale it so for now we'll just put it over there if I want to move it back in the background I just grab it with the two uh, grips and place it where we want it so that's that one done and now we'll go back here and we'll add another image we'll add the second one load it in and this is a bit more detail so we're not too sure which one we're going to make yet I might use a, an amalgamation of a few of them so that's why we bring in quite a bit of reference here so we'll leave that one up there as well and then we'll go for one more and we'll go for the um, I think this one we might have a few of them on it which it does so now I've got quite a few to choose from and that means I can if I put that high above me I can refer to that quite a lot um, and it gives me lots of different options. And now if I click on the individual ones, you can see I can move and scale each one as I feel like they they, they need to be. So we'll probably use this one as the basis, but we might do something like this one for, for, for the horns. And I think, in fact, I think I really quite like that one, or even these ones up here, which have got a really nice shape to them, to the, to the horn at the front. So we're not going to, as I say, it's, it's one of our first videos for a, for a 3D printing exercise. So there will be some things where we go slightly off um, the, the actual reference because we want to do things that work well for 3D printing. So once that's done, we can now just go and select the, the, the sphere itself. So we can start work on that. So to select the sphere, just click with your trigger on your dominant hand and you're now using you're now editing the sphere. I pull down on your thumb and it gives you access to all of the brushes that we're going to use. So the main one that we're going to use is going to be the move tool for now. And just to check, we've got symmetry switched on on our non-dominant hand and we click it on X if we don't and now you can see the two spheres. So we can now start either sculpting or moving based on um, uh, having a, a, a symmetrical um, ability to you know to do both sides so you can see there it's affecting it down this central plane and we can start with if we want to increase the brush size push forward with our thumbstick and now we can do larger sweeping moves so what I think I'll do is I'll just make the head shape so I'm going to pull down the back of the head like this and I don't like what I've done at the front there so I'm just going to smooth it down so I'm holding the trigger of on my non-dominant hand and then when I fire with my dominant hand, it smooths it down. So I'll do it again, I'll pull it out, hold the trigger here, and then that means it's it's smoothing instead of adding or, or moving as I'm doing here. So what we want to do is we want to shape um, these kind of horns at the top. So we'll keep shaping around the back and smoothing. And when you're doing work like this, 
what you don't want to do is worry about any detailing. So this is called a primary form. So we're going to do primary, secondary and tertiary forms. And the primary form is where we're just looking for the shape. So we're looking for what we call, call one of everything. So we need all of the all of the legs, all of the limbs, all of the, the pointy bits for the horns all need to be on there. And we're going to slowly work through and we're going to add each of those. So as you can see now, I'm slowly working through. See it? Because I was using it just from one angle there, it's lost a little bit of the um it, it basically went way too wide so that didn't it didn't look good for us there now because we've now started to pull things out we're going to get some fracturing you can see it here in the mesh so if you want to turn the wireframe on for a minute you'll see what's happening with the mesh there and and what's happening now is you can see that it's it's elongating these polygons so we need to solve that so this is one of the key fundamentals. If you've got them stretched out like this, they become um, a problem for you later on. So let's just do it again. You'll see what I mean. So around here, you can see it's stretching them out and it's working. It's holding the shape, but it's not going to be ideal. If you hold down the trigger and smooth, it will use dynamic tessellation or dynamic topology to change the density of the mesh. Just be careful not to go too thin, as you can see there which you'd want to be careful of. So you may want more geometry at some point. So if you come to your dominant hand and look at the context menu, which is the little white square, and then the second one down is topology. So let's just do it a little bit further across over here so we can see it a bit better. And the second one down, topology. And in topology, you can either subdivide the model, you can regularize the model, which we'll, go, we'll do each one of these in a moment, or you can voxel remesh. So let's just do subdivide first of all. So if we use subdivide and hit, just watch the triangles in this sort of area. If I hit apply, you can see that each triangle becomes four more triangles. So it times is the polygon count by four, but you have more to work with and more to sculpt on there. So that's one way of doing it. So we'll just undo that. And you undo with a, a, a flick of your thumb thumbstick on your non-dominant hand. Now to regularize, we'll leave that at 50 and we'll hit apply. And again, it will regularize the mesh. In other programs, this is like something like DynaMesh in ZBrush. Now when I'm smoothing now, it takes away some of those, um, the amount of polygons, because it's thinking it doesn't need that many. And there is an option later on to turn that off. So it would just be smoothing the polygons that are there. But that smoothing of the mesh gives you more polygons to play with. Or we can go here at the bottom, which is the one that I like a lot, which is called voxel remesh. And this basically will put a box around the model. And if you apply it, you'll see what I mean. Um, if I change the resolution first, you can see the size of the box. If I go make the squares really, really large and the resolution really low and then apply it, you can see the result is quite low polygon. So we'll undo that. And then we'll do it again with a much larger resolution. We'll go really high this time, do it again. or well, not really high, but high enough. In fact, that is too high. And you can see that that's super high. So it, it, it's a way to make your mesh um, more dense so you can get more detail on it. So they're the different ways that you can do it. So we'll just go with uh, a bit lower on the voxel remesh um, and we'll do an apply there. And that basically gives us um, all of the mesh smoothed out at this stage. Now we'll do this quite a lot, but you'll see me doing it throughout the whole of this video. Um, but at least now you know what could be going on underneath when I, when I talk about it. So back to what we were doing, we were just using the move tool and we're using the move tool to pull out the different shapes. So I'm gonna do another, like a spike here. I'll just do a, I'll bring this one out a bit longer. And then we're almost done at the front end now, and we can call that one done, and we'll move on to the body. So let's just get the head. Um, I'm just I'm just picking one of the beetles, so we're going to use this one for a, for the shape here, which is quite nice. So I'm going to push it in at the back, bring it around, and I'm trying to get. I'm not too worried about accuracy on this. What I'm trying to do is get a shape that's going to be good for 3D printing. So I'll probably eventually put an eye in there or something like that sort of area there. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit more int visually interesting around here. You can see a bit of a face going on there. 